Is AOC completely unhinged? She said some wild stuff in the past, but does this week mark her worst ever? The left is in charge of the county that contains Houston, Texas, just ordered everyone to wear masks for the next month or face a possible $1,000 fine. And Democrats show that they are not the party of diversity and inclusion. All that and more. I'm Bobby Everly. This is a 13-minute news hour. God bless the United States of America. All right, friends, welcome to the show. Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week. We've got a lot to cover. We're going to start with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, because as you know, she said some wild stuff in the past, things that just make you scratch your head and things that either they only apply to a far, far left group that understands these fringe comments, or they're so dumb you wonder how they were spoken in the first place. So I would argue that this week is her worst ever. And I'm talking about the week in total because I think as far as an individual statement, nothing really tops her fear of the garbage disposal. I am told this is a garbage disposal. I've never seen a garbage disposal. I never had one in any place I've ever lived. It is terrifying. I don't know what to use it for or what its purpose is. Come on, seriously? I mean, give me a break. I don't I don't even get that video. It was just it's just nuts. And so before I move on to this week, I, there's an honorable mention. The garbage disposal is tops, but this one it just it just left me just wondering what she's talking about. And it's timely because she actually mentions coronavirus. Check this out. Honestly, it sounds almost so silly to say, but There's a lot of restaurants that are feeling the pain of racism, uh, where people are literally not patroning Chinese restaurants. Um, They're not patroning Asian restaurants because of just straight up racism around the coronavirus. Okay, first of all, the word is patronize. You aren't patroning a restaurant. There's no such thing as that. And the whole concept that people staying away because they're racist is just... I mean, that's just a left-wing talking point that she can't even get right. It's like, oh my gosh, it's a Chinese restaurant. I'll include, I'll accuse the people who don't go of being racist. I mean, give me a break, folks. But that leads us into this week. And it was just a stunner how over and over again, she says things that just, it shows that how out of touch she is with the American public and how motivated she is to bring this socialist leftist agenda to fruition. And under a crisis, she sees, as most leftists do, everything as an opportunity, an opportunity for more control, more big government, and less freedom for the individual. And it all started early in the week. As oil prices were plummeting on Monday, sometimes going negative for a while, AOC jumped on Twitter, used it as an opportunity. She tweeted this, You absolutely love to see it. This, along with record low interest rates, means it's the right time for a worker-led mass investment in green infrastructure to save our planet. Cough. You absolutely love to see it? I don't even know what the cough means. I'm not sure about that. But she actually said that with the prices going down, which means whole industries are suffering, People are suffering. People will lose jobs. Companies will close. She says you absolutely love to see it. Because again, the left uses this as an opportunity. So the backlash was intense. She deleted that tweet shortly afterwards, but didn't move on from that. She just replaced it with this one. This snapshot is being acknowledged as a turning point in the climate movement. Fossil fuels are in long-term structural decline. This, along with low interest rates, means it's the time to create millions of jobs transitioning to renewable and clean energy, a key opportunity. Folks, this is so misguided. It just shows, again, that she's looking at this as an opportunity to transform the country into a socialist nation where we have less freedom. I mean, she's actually cheering this collapse. You absolutely love it, is what she said. And it's so misguided in general, because this so-called green tech, it pollutes as you create it. I mean, one study shows that you have to drive a Tesla for eight years to, for it to 
undo the carbon emissions from an internal combustion engine. That's how much carbon is put into the atmosphere just making the rechargeable batteries. Okay, so it's not green. It's not helping the environment like people like AOC says. It's just a trade-off, one tech for another. Yet, by doing this, by forcing people out of work, by closing industries, she promotes an agenda that puts the government more in control because they are picking the winners and losers. They are saying that these industries will succeed and other ones will fail. So from there, then she moved on to a bizarre comment about comparing coronavirus crisis and the reaction from the Trump administration, their efforts to solve the problem, and Congress's efforts to do legislation for aid and business loans and stimulus for workers. She likened that to the equivalent of a 9-11's worth of deaths. Check this out. And the last time we left, again, we lost over one 9 11th worth of people due to this lack of, of, um, of action. One 9 11th worth of people have died? I mean, it makes no sense. Congress is working on the bills. Local governments and hospitals are treating the patients. No one has died because Congress hasn't acted. It's just fear tactics. Her along with the media, stirring up fear, stirring up panic. That comment makes no sense and it's not relevant to the discussion at all. So that leads us to even the topper, in my opinion, for this week for her. And that is, as people, as the economy is shut down, people are eager to get back to work. And the thing is, is that it won't be the same. Businesses, some businesses that have closed will not reopen. Some jobs that have lost are not gonna come back. And now, as we see the, the light at the end of the tunnel, people starting to go back to work, governments, states trying to reopen, she's actually encouraging workers not to go back to work, not to go back to work, to stay home. Check this out. There's a lot that we could be doing right now, but ultimately, the, I think when we talk about this idea of reopening society, you know, only in America does the president, when the president tweets about liberation, does he mean go back to work? Oh my gosh, what is she talking about? This liberation only in America? She knocks the president for saying it's liberating for people to go back to work. So my question is, what does liberation mean to AOC? Okay, because people go to work, they earn a living, they are able to buy food and other necessities from their work. Okay, that's liberating. People are closed in right now. They can't do anything. They can't go anywhere. They can't go to their jobs. Many do not have jobs. Now 26 million people over the last five weeks have filed unemployment claims. 26 million people. That wipes out all the job gains, all of them, since the collapse in 2008, 2009. All those jobs are gone. And she's talking about people not going back to work. Here's more. When we you know, have this discussion about going going back or reopening, I think a lot of people should just say, no, we're not going back to that. We're not going back to working 70 hour weeks just so that we could put food on the table and not even feel any sort of semblance of security in our lives. So where do you begin? I mean, that whole, this whole segment of AOC belongs in our Friday relaxed brain area. I mean, She's implying that it's not honorable to work, to buy food for your family, to feed yourself. That's not honorable. So if she wants to stay home, if she wants others to stay home, fine, quit. Because there's nothing that's, that brings dignity to a person more than going to work, more than earning a paycheck rather than being given money from the government, taxpayer funded. People want to work. They want to earn their own money. And for her not to understand that shows just how out of touch she is, shows how just divorced from reality she is when she thinks it's not honorable to go out and make a living to pay your own rent, to pay for your own food, to pay for your own college. It just it makes no sense. So next, I want to move on to what's going on in Harris County, Texas. It's my neighboring county. I am just in a Houston suburb. So Harris County includes Houston, Texas. And the leader of the county, the position known as county judge, 
issued this Democrat issued an order, an executive order, making it a new rule mandating that people who go out in Harris County must wear masks for the next month or face a possible $1,000 fine. And here's a report from the Houston Press. Starting Monday, April 27th, and for 30 days thereafter, every person in Harris County ages 10 and older will have to wear a face covering if they are out and about. The latest research on this virus tells us that even if you are not symptomatic, you could still carry the virus, so those particles, when you sneeze, when you cough, or even just close proximity to the others, you could end up being a carrier and giving the virus to somebody else, said Harris County Judge Lena Hidalgo. All right, so before I go off on my months-long rant, this makes no sense, folks, okay? Because we're all supposed to be practicing social distancing, and she's talking about what can happen if you're in close proximity to others. If you're practicing social distancing, you do not need a mask, okay? If you're about to sneeze, go in your elbow. We've talked about the hygiene. We've talked about social distancing. This is unnecessary. And I have been shut in for months. I don't have it. I never go anywhere. So if I go out, I'm not going to wear a mask because I'm not going to give it to anybody. And if I did have it, the only people I'd come in contact with, I would stay away from the elderly. I'd stay away from the vulnerable. If I gave it to someone, then the vast, vast, vast majority of people would have little to no symptoms. That stat has not changed, okay? They would likely not even feel it. So if we practice social distancing, if we stay away from the elderly and the vulnerable, the immunocompromised, we'd be okay. This is way above what the powers of the county judge should be, and it goes against our constitutional rights. And here's more from the Houston Press. We're not asking people to wear a medical mask or an N95 mask, Hidalgo said. Just what you need to cover your nose and mouth. She said, adding that this can be a homemade mask, a bandana, or any type of cloth covering. With exceptions built in for people with mental and medical disabilities, the order comes with a fine of up to $1,000 for violators. People are not required to wear facial coverings when they are exercising or at home, driving or eating. So if you read the executive order. There's other exceptions too, which I found interesting. One, if you're unconscious, you don't need to wear a mask. Two, if you're incapacitated, you don't need to wear a mask. So unconscious or incapacitated, you won't be fined. All right. You're, they'll just, you're okay. You can go on from there. So then there is another interesting aspect to the story that the Houston Press pointed out. And I just want to bring this up here. Harris County was reporting one more death brings its total to 46 and a total of 2,236 confirmed COVID-19 cases, an increase of 41 over the day before. All right. Harris County has 4.7 million people. It includes Houston, Texas, the third largest city in America, 4.7 million people in the county. They've had 46 deaths. Okay. In 2017, according to the CDC, There were 433 flu deaths in Harris County. Here we have 46 and they're they're shutting down everything and making people wear masks for the next month. Now, the outrage has been, as you can understand, intense. And here is some of that report. I have not met one person in law enforcement that's going to enforce that order. David Cuevas is the president of the Harris County Deputies Organization. He says Judge Hidalgo is exceeding her authority. We are stretched thin. Murders are up 63%. And we're concerned about having a citation issue to citizens if they're not wearing a mask. So then there's the constitutionality of this whole thing. And And County Judge Mark Henry of neighboring Galveston County had this to say. My general counsel is crystal clear. It's unconstitutional and we'll get you sued. In Galveston County, Judge Mark Henry says he believes such orders are unconstitutional and there will be no orders mandating people wear face masks in Galveston County. We said from the beginning, we know social distancing works, maintain the six feet, and that should be given up. Friends, we cannot change our form of government to handle a crisis. We need to maintain our form of government and use that to handle a crisis in an American kind of way. When we got together, when we said we're gonna form our government this way, when we made a constitution, it didn't just have a big asterisk that say, we follow this only in good times. In a crisis, we'll go complete totalitarian, we'll throw this out the window. No, 
we have to make solutions that honor our form of government. And what we see right now is not that. And this whole thing with the masks, it's optics, okay? If you watch Tucker Carlson the other night, there's eight states in the United States that have not done any lockdown procedures at all. And their stats are not out of line with the rest of the country as far as how they're doing. And researchers even factored in, taking those states, factored in things like population, population density, other factors like that, and found that lockdown or no lockdown, things are about the same. So next, I want to move on to the Democrats. But before I do, I got to give you guys a special announcement. Tune in tomorrow. Tune in tomorrow. I'll be on Newsmax TV, their Saturday report, about 9.30 in the morning, Central Daylight Time. Check that out. It's on a number of cable outlets. You can get it on streaming services like Apple TV or just go to NewsmaxTV.com or YouTube. You can watch it. I think it's going to be great. Also, if you like this program, if you love how it's going, please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell because we're making the push, folks, and you can see the movement. 100K by Election Day. Because of all of you, I know we can do it. So next I want to talk about the Democrats because, you know, they talk about being the party of inclusion, being the party of diversity, helping everyone. Well, that only applies if you say exactly what they say, if you do exactly what they do, if you think exactly the way they say you can think. If you do all of that, oh yeah, then you're included. If not, it's a little bit of a different story. Georgia Democrat Vernon Jones said Thursday that the way his party has treated him since he endorsed President Trump is proof that they are the bigots they claim to hate. The way the Democrat Party has treated me this past week has made one thing clear. They are the bigots they claim to hate, and I won't be silent about it, Jones tweeted, along with a video of local news coverage of his resignation from the State House. So in a statement released Wednesday, he said he was going to step down from his state representative role in Georgia, and he put out this. State Representative Vernon Jones. I'm sick and tired of me and my family being attacked and harassed by the Democrat Party for putting my country before my party. I take pride in being an independent thinker. My First Amendment right to freedom of speech is under siege. I intend to help the Democrat Party get rid of its bigotry against black people that are independent and conservative. I endorse the white guy, Donald J. Trump, that lets lets blacks out of jail. They endorse the white guy, Joe Biden, that puts blacks in jail. Turn the lights off. I have left the plantation. Wow, that was awesome. That was good stuff. So that was Wednesday. Then yesterday comes around and he has a change of heart because this outpouring of support, not just from his state, but across the country was so big, so inspiring to him that he said he's going to keep on fighting. Yesterday, I announced my intentions to resign from my office, but shortly thereafter, the outpour of support I received was too great for me to ignore. I will not allow the Democrats to bully me into submission. I will not let them win. I will not resign. Hashtag MAGA. All right, so folks, that was Georgia. Then there's Michigan. Remember the Democrat who was sick, who got COVID-19, but because of President Trump's advice saying, if you're in really bad shape, this is something to try, the hydroxychloroquine. She did it. She got better. She actually thanked President Trump. And then she was attacked. Here's her story. Democrats in Detroit plan to censure Democrat Michigan Rep. Karen Witzlet, who credited President Donald Trump with saving her life after she experienced a severe case of the coronavirus. Witzlet used hydroxychloroquine to treat her illness. The drug normally used to treat malaria patients has been touted by President Trump as an effective treatment for the coronavirus. Witzlet later visited the White House and has repeatedly offered praise for the president. So you see that? She gets sick. She tries a remedy. Why not? If you're sick in that bad of shape, thanks President Trump. And now she's the one that's getting attacked and possibly censured. Here's more. Now the 13th Congressional District Democrat Party organization is seeking to censure the lawmaker. At the end of the day, we have political systems, said Jonathan Kinlock, chairman of the organization, according to the Detroit News. We have political parties and political parties exist for a reason. What's it? tweeted that the president Thursday bemoaning actions taken by Detroit Democrats. 
As part of the censure resolution, Witsit will be barred from receiving the group's endorsement in the next election and will also be prohibited from taking part in activities with the group for two years. Folks, this is not anything new. Here are two examples that have really stood out recently, but we've seen this over time. We've seen this with Clarence Thomas, with J.C. Watts, with Herman Cain, with Ben Carson, with columnist Star Parker, on and on and on. If you are a black, an African-American in this country, and yet you're a conservative, you're not embraced. You're not welcome into the Democrat Party at all. You are ostracized. Unless you think like they do, you're labeled a sellout. And we see it over and over again, how even in this time of this crisis, any praise for the president is means to get you expelled from the party. So next, I want to talk about, <laughs> I mean, this whole show today could be put into the relaxed brain, but there are a couple standouts, a couple items that just make you scratch your head and say, do you have a relaxed brain? I got what you call like, I don't know, a relaxed brain. All right, first there's KPRC TV in Houston. And I played their clips earlier talking about the activities of the masks in Harris County. Well, when they did their report about that story, here is the overlay they put up on their television program on things you can use instead of surgical masks and N95 masks. It says, so remember, you're not supposed to wear surgical masks or N95 masks, but you can wear homemade masks, scarves, or bananas. That's nice. That, that, that makes a lot of sense. And it just reminds, I just want to throw this one up there because it kind of goes along with just goofy stuff. Check out this picture. No parking either side. So that's just an addition. Next, I want to talk about Nancy Pelosi because she, this week, was on ABC News and she continues this narrative that President Trump is addressing this situation, not listening to his task force, not listening to experts like Dr. Deborah Burks, who's awesome. I mean, this president holds these press conferences, uses the advice of these experts to come up with these plans, yet Nancy Pelosi says he acts on whims and magic and things like that. Check this out. So it's very important that we walk the line that is close to evidence, data, science uh, as we go forward and not whimsy, magic, hoax uh, as, uh, allegations and placing dream, game, placing blame instead of taking responsibility. So hoax talk and magic. That's what President Trump's using, according to Nancy Pelosi. All right, friends, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed this extended edition, this Friday edition, some bonus coverage. It was a lot of fun. Please subscribe. And when you do, please hit that bell so you'll be notified. And we'll see you next time. I'm Bobby Eberly. This is a 13-minute news hour. Okay, friends, thanks so much for watching. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you'll be notified. And here's a special video just for you so you can watch even more of the 13-minute news hour. And don't forget to check out GOPUSA.com for the best in conservative news and commentary. We'll see you next time.